The concept of Blue Marble Health is a, is really represents a changing paradigm that we've seen uh, on the problem of poverty-related poverty diseases uh, over the last two decades. Um, a central finding uh, that uh, I've made, that we've made, is that today most of the world's poverty-related diseases, such as neglected tropical diseases, as well as uh, uh, AIDS and tuberculosis and others, are not necessarily in the poorest, most devastated countries. In fact, when we look at numbers coming from the World Health Organization or data from the Global Burden of Disease Study, uh, what we actually find is something a little bit counterintuitive, and that is most of the world's poverty-related neglected diseases are actually in the world's wealthiest economies, the G20 countries together with Nigeria. The reason we had Nigeria is even though it's not a G20 country, a group of 20 country, it has an economy that's larger than the bottom three or four G20 economies. So it's the poor living among the wealthy that now account for the world's poverty-related diseases. And so, so the, 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 the implication for that is we're seeing a shift. So when we ordinarily think about global health problems, we think of the contrast between developing countries and developed countries. What we're seeing with this blue marble health concept is all economies are rising, but they're leaving behind a bottom segment of society. And it's the poorest people in the G20 countries that now suffer mostly from these neglected poverty-related diseases. The reason uh, I think this blue, this concept of blue marble health, and I call it blue marble health, one to give it a different name from global health, but also uh, I'm using the iconic symbol uh, that was uh, of the of planet Earth taken by the Apollo astronauts in the 1970s, where um, this is probably one of the most widely reproduced photographs uh, of all time, where they had the full frontal view of, of the Earth and really showing it looks like a big blue marble and it's become an important symbol of peace and healing. The reason this is so important is it has enormous policy implications because what it says is that if the leaders of the G20 economies together with, together with Nigeria would reaffirm their commitment to their own neglected populations, we could have a huge impact on cutting the number of neglected diseases and poverty related diseases by up to two-thirds. So we could wipe out two-thirds of the world's disease burden from neglected tropical diseases and other poverty related uh, neglected diseases. So that's a very, very important concept. So rather than the old paradigm where we're relying on uh, taking the G7 countries and asking them to pony up again for more overseas development assistance, I'm not saying that should stop, that should continue, but this creates a new space uh, bringing in the G20 leaders. They refer to uh, very common widespread uh, diseases that uh, occur predominantly in the setting of poverty and an important feature is they're highly debilitating so they not only occur in the setting of poverty but they cause poverty because of their uh, deleterious impact on child growth and development. They actually shave IQ points off of kids. Uh, they affect pregnancy outcome and they make people too sick to go to work. So these are, these are the diseases that hold back people from achieving their full uh, economic and educational potential. Uh, I like to call them sometimes the most important diseases you've never heard of. They're diseases such as hookworm or schistosomiasis, but they also include dengue and now even Zika virus infection could be considered a neglected tropical disease. And again, most of these are now occurring among the poor, the forgotten poor, living in G20 countries. I think we, we have to take a two-pronged approach. I think we need to have the G20 leaders, one, maximize the, maximize the use of existing medicines that we have in hand in order to treat neglected tropical diseases, and currently that's not happening. So for example, uh, one of the findings from the book is that uh, most of the Chagas disease cases are actually occurring in Latin America's three wealthiest economies, uh, Brazil, Argentina and Mexico, 
as well as uh, the seventh largest number in the United States. The problem is the vast majority, 99% of those people, do not have access to diagnosis and treatment. So the vast majority, almost all the people with Chagas disease in the four largest economies in the Western Hemisphere have no access to diagnosis and treatment. We need to fix that. Uh, or the fact that in uh, India and China, which has uh, enormous economies, China has the second largest economy in the world, we still are not providing access to essential medicines uh, for some very important neglected uh, tropical diseases. So I think this is, uh, we have to, to realign uh, our priorities. And, and a very important point and a key part of the book is that uh, when we talk about the G20 countries, I'm even, or even referring to some of the wealthiest G20 economies. For instance, in the United States, we have 12 million Americans, uh, I estimate, that live uh, in extreme poverty with a neglected tropical disease. These are diseases such as Chagas disease, toxicoriasis, uh, even diseases such as dengue and Zika, um, mostly in the American South, where most of the, which has the greatest concentration of uh, poverty. So 12 million Americans uh, that really fly below the radar screen that are also don't have access uh, to medicine. So I think one of the most important uh, aspects of the book is the policy implications of getting the G20 elected leaders to pay more attention to their own neglected poor and provide access to treatment. That's one part of it. That's one key part. A second part is the research and development agenda uh, because unfortunately for most of the neglected uh, tropical diseases as well as other poverty related infections we don't have uh, good medicines good diagnostics and good vaccines. And yet the G20 countries together have enormous horsepower in terms of biotechnology for producing these very important uh, drugs, diagnostics, and vaccines. So getting, uh, figuring out a way to bring the G20 leaders together to create uh, funding uh, instruments, funding mechanisms for vaccines, diagnostics, and, and, and drugs is going to be very important. And I give some examples of the book where we have some successes. So for instance, the Japanese government has recently created a what's called a GHIT fund, a Global Health and Innovation Technology Fund uh, that brings in local industry and academic institutions with international product development partnerships, such as the one that, that we have here in Houston, Texas, uh, the Sabin Vaccine Institute and Texas Children's Hospital Center for vaccine development, which is an inter integral research component of our National School of Tropical Medicine at Baylor College of Medicine. I think we should be able to establish 20 of those mechanisms in each of the G20 countries uh, uh, for that. So I think there's going to be a lot of policy implications, and I'm hoping that the book will become an important subject of future G20 sub. The world has changed that we now have most of the world's poverty-related neglected diseases among the poor in wealthy economies, especially the group of 20 countries, the G20 countries. And therefore, this has important policy implications for uh, the leaders of the G20 countries. And to make this a key uh, message at a future G20 summit, that we, have, we can now do something very uh, concrete and substantial with the world's poverty related diseases. Our National School of Tropical Medicine at Baylor College of Medicine is really at the forefront of taking on these uh, poverty related diseases. Um, in collaboration with Sabin Vaccine Institute and Texas Children's Hospital, we're now uh, leading efforts to develop vaccines for poverty related diseases making vaccines for diseases that the big pharmaceutical companies so far have not had any interest in because they're for people who live in poverty. Uh, they include vaccines for diseases that occur uh, right here in Texas, such as Chagas disease uh, and Leishmaniasis. Another key Blue Marble Health activity is doing the epidemiology and disease surveillance for diseases uh, such as Zika, uh, but also uh, arbovirus infections and other 
uh, afflictions that disproportionately affect people living in poverty. So the idea behind the National School of Tropical Medicine uh, at Baylor College of Medicine, which we launched five years ago to be here in the Texas Medical Center of Houston, is to be a school that's exclusively devoted to these poverty-related poverty conditions.